Welcome to Red 35. And today we have a special guest in the house. He's currently one of the best food photographers in the world and he is... Jean Casals. Ta -da! Hello and I'm really happy to be a guest on this show and we're going to talk a lot about food, food photography, photography, everything in between and I hope you like it. Before we start to talk about food and photography or anything that you know that you do, mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about yourself first. You know, like uh, where you come from. You know, uh, 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 you know, a little bit of a journey, just kind of um, uh, uh, why you end up in here in, in, in the big in the story. UK. Yeah, basically uh, the paradox about my profession or my my career is the fact that I was very bad at school, and uh, I end up doing photography and coming to England, which I love. And it all started by uh, studying art mm -hmm. and then moving on photography, which I always loved. But my first love, I have to say, was medicine. I wanted to be a surgeon. Really? Wow. wow. So wow. I just took the highest, most difficult jobs to do. And then my parents said, Jean, you know, you can't do it. You, you, we love you, but this is not it. So I said, okay, I'll do photography then. Okay. And I always loved it since I was a child. And I had the chance to be able to make a living out of it. So that's how I, it's all came about. Well, I can find something in common. You both use a knife, you're a surgeon. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And it's very precise. It's, both things are very precise. Perfect. Which is Perfect. good. That's, that's really good. And, and you know, like a, uh, you mentioned about, you know, the, your transition. You obviously, you wanted to be a surgeon. It didn't kind of happen. And you kind of look into photography. But mm. what drives you into photography? Kind of like, did you have any influence before? Or? Well, I think it's because of my family. We're yeah. all artists, writers, uh, painters, uh, all kind of architects. We're all very sort of artistic in the family, and I guess it's in the DNA of all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I picked up photography because I like imagery. I like, um, you know, I like imagery basically. And yeah. taking pictures was like so instant. Right. And uh, instant gratification about it and uh, discovery, and you can take the camera wherever you want. So that's how it came up. Right. And I said, well, let's not make a, a job out of it. Okay, okay. What was, it, uh, what was your first camera when you, when you... My first camera was like a lot of people on Instamatic. Oh, you did? Yes. Wow. That was my first <laughs> camera. And then I moved on to... Uh, what did I move on to? I moved on to Yashica. Uh, what, the, the medium format? Yashica. The no, no, no. 35 mil Yashica. Oh, okay. And yeah. then I moved to Contax, yeah. which was the, my camera. That, yeah, uh, yeah, not yeah. many people had Contax at the time. And then I moved on to Canon, Hasselblad, of course, for many years. Yeah. And now finally Nikon, but I mean the camera is a tool for me. Like a lot of people yes. would say, it's yes. it's first and foremost is the eye. It's how you look at things. Yeah. Because the camera is just record things. And no, uh, absolutely yes. So many people think it's the camera will make the the shot, but no, it's not. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about your your gear later on, but um. Uh, you know, like uh, I know that you are obviously, you know, now known for your food photography, mm -hmm. and you, know, you you won many awards because of the food photography. Mm -hmm. But I know you 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 started actually not being a food photographer. You started a little bit of portrait photography first. So can you yeah. tell us a little bit about the portrait side of it? I mean, I started actually with fashion when I was at college, and fashion was uh, something I always loved. I was very very influenced because he was my sort of guru, Guy Bourdin. Yeah. French photographers would influence a lot of people and photography in general. And it was really the vision he has was something I was really close to. Mm. But when I was at college, basically they told me, Jean, it is great, but this is too much of a sexual nature. And I think based on those factors, if you did apply that mm. to portraits, it would be much more fun, which I did. And it, it really worked. Yeah, and yeah, I did yeah, a lot, yeah. a lot of portraiture. Okay. And that, that was great. Right, so you, uh, you mentioned fashion, so you would, like, mm -hmm. basically, do you, did you do any campaigns or anything like that? Or? No, because it was still at college okay, and yeah. very quickly the first job they, they, they realized that what I was doing was a bit too quirky and too... 
it was not right. Mm. So I just very quickly move on to portraiture, and that, okay. that did work really so well. So am, am, really well. am I right or wrong to say, you know, like some of your food, like beginning at least the beginning of the food photography, has a little bit of influence from your kind of fashion portrait, you know, kind of elements. Yes, it. yes, it did. I mean, I, I think for all photographers, yeah. like for people who write, we're always influenced by past masters or writers. Mm. So yes, we all have photographers that we admire and we don't copy, but you get inspired. I always say to people who start, you know, look at books, look at things you like or you might feel yeah, yeah, in relation ways. And then yeah. you take your own way yeah. from those things, but you need some kind of starting point. Yeah. And I think for writers it's the same. And for me, Guy Bourdin, Newton, and a lot of other people, colorists, because I was really into colors, were very influential. People like Penn, I know it's a classic, but it's a basic, uh, were really important in my life. And mm. then, then you move on because once you, you register all those images, then you make, that, you make your own images, which yes. is very important. That's why I think college is always very important to develop your talents as assistant is very good mm -hmm. but sometimes I see assistants get too technical yeah. and too much about the technique of things and the, the actual actually artistic forget, side is not as much. About image making. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because I'm a, I feel myself as an image maker more than a photographer. I don't take pictures, I make pictures. Yes. Wow, I'd like to you, don't, you don't just I'd click, like to click yeah. the button. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. I think about it. Yeah. But I mean, it doesn't mean that taking pictures is not great, it's different. Yes, of course. From that point onward, you know, you move into food mm -hmm. photography. And was it in the mid nine, mid nineties? Uh, food? food photography. I started in uh, mid nineties, mid nineties. Yeah, like yeah, ninety six, something like that. And and then kind of what got you into food photography? What got me into food photography? Because I was doing portraiture, which I really love and I still love. Yeah. But things moved on to grunge, and the grunge was not exactly my my cup of tea, to be honest. Yeah. And I like to control things. I was really influenced by people like Annie Leibovitz and people like that, where we shoot people in a different situation. Yeah. Because when you shoot known people or unknown well people, you go sometimes half an hour, 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to come with an idea, so you have to pre plan in advance. Of course, yes, absolutely, yes. And I always start safe, then I move on to the fun stuff. But because of that, then when the grunge came up, where everything had to be very sort of what you see is what you get, I just sort of lost of interest and mm. magazine wanted other things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my girlfriend told me, oh, mais Jean, you love traveling, you love food. Why don't you move into that? And it just happened that I met, uh, I was working a bit for Vogue Entertaining and I met Delia Smith, Sainsbury Magazine and everything, which was quite a good magazine at the time. Yeah. And, uh, I did work for Delia, and Delia said, Jean, we're looking to travel for us and take mm. pictures, food for, pictures for us. Yeah. And then that was that. And then, you know, I, I moved on food photography without realizing it, and I loved it. Wow. To that day, actually, I keep, keep doing it. in the industry for so many years now mm -hmm. and uh, you know I think a lot of um, uh, aspiring photographers would like to understand a little bit more about professional photography you know you know you don't have to work like it, uh, whatever the, 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 the industry you're in mm -hmm. like fashions weddings or food or anything else but you know in, in general term you know obviously uh, there will be some highs and lows you know uh, when, when you're becoming your own boss yeah. and and uh, you know you must have some experience in that so you know is there mm -hmm. anything you could share with the, the you know? I'd say the high and lows like a lot of jobs it's based on the fact you're independent when you're your own chief you really need to be disciplined mm. so uh, you get to organize your life you're gonna have to organize to see people client promoting yourself so already that's got to be your DNA to be yeah, yeah. self-promoting entrepreneur kind of thing now you know it's always a question of being a leader and a follower if you're somebody who are happy to to be doing things very well but working for a company like a studio or a retouching company that's great but you have to see what what is your action direction if you prefer to direct or be directed or to shoot or working in a company where they tell you what to do. That's very personal. Mm. But I say that if you want to be a photographer, you need to be ready for days where you don't work, yep. days where you got too much work, days where you got things where it was not planned. So 
the great beauty of this photo of photography or being dependent is the fact that you just every day is a new day. I mean, yeah. I know it sounds a cliche, <laughs> but every day is a new day. In terms of work, the phone can ring and all of a sudden it can be a job where they take you for five days in the Maldives yeah. to shoot something or God knows what, but that's what I love. Now, this can be created, it can create worries because if you haven't got that phone call or you've got yeah. something you worry. But that's exciting as well, you know, the, the fact of not knowing can be uh, giving you sort of um, worries, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, when it comes, it's great. I, I actually think that's a window for creativity sometimes. Exactly, you know? and then if yes. you don't do anything, just do your own, sh own work or do things and create projects. But you have to always create a dynamic, you have to always create something yes. for yourself. Because you do that for you, you don't do that for somebody else. No. So the more you put in, the more you get back. That's right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I, th I think. I think a lot of the, uh, especially younger photographers, mm. you know, like they, they always see the, the glamorous side of of, of successful yeah, photographers. Yeah. You know, like uh, uh, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a big gun fashion photographer. I'm always going on location, shoot like supermodels, and you're traveling all all around the world photographing mm -hmm. food and eat them. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's why I do that job. <laughs> and 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 then you know, like uh, uh, I travel to different locations for my shoot. You know, mm. like so people see the good side of it, but people don't always see what's yeah, behind yeah, the it's scenes. True. And, and it's I think, true. And I think you know they. A lot of the newer newcomers and new photographers should really understand, you know, if you want to be professional one day, if you want to be good at something, you need to understand all aspects of photography. Completely, like in yes. a lot of other jobs. I mean, you've got to take the, the high and the low together. And, but you've got to keep, as I always say, you have to keep an integrity about what you do. Yes. So it's, 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 it's 50 percent integrity of what you do because you do the job for yourself yeah. and you're an artist first and foremost and a photographer, you try to create a dynamic and a vision and you try to transcend this vision to the client. Now the client might like that because that's what he's using you yep. and what you're known for, but you have as well to accept the fact that this vision might be changed a little bit because the client wants this a certain yep. way because of, course, of the yes. product and so. So being a photographer and a professional photographer, I mean to make money out of it, you have to be as well ready to compromise and to embark on different journeys with different uh, tasks and things like that around things you like. So sometimes, yes, you do jobs and you do it. Uh, it's not as exciting as you would expect to be, but you, know, you have to look at the long shot. Mm. One medium job can bring other jobs where later on they might give you a bigger job or better job. But always take everything you do on a positive note. Even so, it's not what you want to do. Everything is a learning curve. Yeah, and that's what it is with uh, with uh, being uh, independent. It's everything you, you do is is for a reason. It's nothing. Oh my God, it's boring. It's not boring. It might be a little bit, but you think <laughs> that brought me this, who brought me that. Everything links it's, to something it's else. It's probably not not boring, but maybe a little bit repetitive. repetitive. It can be repetitive, yeah. but so many jobs are repetitive. I think you know the repetition is make you good because once you know something perfect, yeah. and especially with digital nowadays, <laughs> we've got so much more freedom to think about the creativity. I mean, before we used to have film, we have to think about the light, about the filters, about this, about that, you know, the polarity. There were so many elements of the, on the technical side, which now the camera, I mean, God, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stevie Wonder can take pictures now and they'll be sharp, you know, <laughs> you know, oh, and uh, <laughs> so you can have plenty of time to think for yourself. would you go in terms of integrity you know like obviously you you, you have to strike the balance in a way you know well the integrity is is a tough one because integrity sometimes can be taken for sort of arrogance mm. which is not uh, so you got to, you got to deal with it you know tactically with with some people you can impose something but you have to play it's a bit like driving you know when you change mm. gears yeah. you got to really go and feel okay here I can impose a bit my look uh, sometimes you can't. The, the main things to, to be able to keep your integrity or impose is to make the client confident. So when the client is confident and you feel he's in the right hands, then you can deliver your message more your own way. Yeah. Now it's to, as soon as people are at ease, it's amazing what you can get from them. Mm. So that's also an art form. Photography is not just about taking pictures, it's about dealing with clients, it's about dealing with atmosphere, mood. Sometimes you've got you got shoot who goes completely crazy and then you have yeah. to think, okay, go on, we're going to manage a plan B, we can do this, things can turn wrong, 
can turn wrong. Yeah. But you have to be able to sort of um, turn the situation because at the end of the day, even so you are a, a team of people working, because food photography is what a lot of team, is the one who press on the shutter yeah. beside, i.e. the photographer. And if something goes wrong, it will be on me. If something goes right, it will be on me. Yeah. And I'll be the first one to bring my stylist, my food economist and all that. Because all those two characters are very, very important in food photography. Mm. And without the food economist, the one who cooks, and yeah. the stylist, of when you bring the props, and me, we create a, tri a tree or like a tripod, with, you know, we, we stand on the ground because yeah. of the three of us. That's good because you mentioned about styling now, which I'm going to ask you mm -hmm. about styling, and which is uh, is a big part of food photography. It is a big part of food photography for my for me. Yeah. Now it's not for other people. I mean, everybody can shoot food in a very simple way, and sometimes it's a bit, it's a bit too simple. But simple can be good if it's done well. It's like everything. If it's done well and properly and well thought through, yeah. it can be great. Now it's true that styling depends on the project, like for books or whatever. And styling is bringing the props, uh, the cup, the whatever, the background, and so on. Now it's true in my pictures. I like to compose, and everything's got an interaction between the food with food with the plate, the plate with the background, and the support or any other elements. Everything's got to work as a communion of everything. Everything's got to flow. Yeah. So when you look at the pictures, it's just got to please your eye. As soon as you see something to strike, then that thing was maybe too strong in the picture yeah, 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 it really yeah, shouldn't yeah, be yeah, there yeah, yeah. so it's a balance now that's like the way you look at things yeah. it's an important thing because it's it's going to give the dynamic of the picture and the importance and the strengths you have on the food it's like when I was at college I remember we used to have those little frame in cardboard where you used to put the transparencies okay. yeah, 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 yeah. oh uh, yeah, no, those, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah and I remember the first year they used to give us that beginning beginning and say well Take that around because we didn't have any iPhone and things like that. <laughs> and train your eyes to look through that. Mm -hmm. uh, to see the frame. To frame yeah. things, yeah. to learn how to yeah. frame. Yeah. And I always say sometimes, you know, to people, even if you don't take the picture, the fact you saw the image, yeah. that's, that's great. You yeah. saw the image. Sometimes I, I don't have a camera yeah. and I see a great image and I, okay, I wish I did it, but I didn't do it. The fact of yeah. seeing, it's a bit like people who go to the gym, you know, your body used yeah. to go to carry weights yeah, and things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now your eye got to be trained, but then afterwards it becomes second nature. You just look at things and it's true that I frame, maybe because my glasses help me to of frame, course. because I always got glasses on. Yeah. But it's, it's a dynamic that you create and you develop and the more you do it, the more it gets natural and then you see things that you wouldn't have seen before. I think, I think once the technical side be becoming a second nature as a photographer, exactly. you can start looking at creativity. Exactly. In technical more should be secondary. I mean, it's yes. important oh, because yes, otherwise yes. it falls apart. Course, yes. But you shouldn't be worried, saying, oh my god, what am I going yeah. to do there? Nah. Because yeah. then all of a sudden you get worried, you lose away the, the, the creativity and then Yes, because you, you're probably like me, if, if I see a photograph, I'll probably see some kind of mental image already in my head. Completely, kind of yeah. What, what, what is going to look like, exactly. and I want to yeah. implement that into the photographs. And I think it's key. Yeah. I think to me it's key. I mean, the integrity is very important, especially when you start. You've got to be really, because you will have to change later on in life, because you'll have to adapt to the client. So I always say that, as I said before, you know, assisting and college are really good together. Yes. If you got to do one or the other, well, it's up to you and the money and so on. But when you create, you've got these three years where you can do what yep. you want. And then the year of assisting, then you, you apply that less, but you learn the techniques and learn the business. And then the two together is when you're on your own. Yeah. So that's the best way to do it if you can. Now, this is your food photography career and, you know, it's been many years. <laughs> Is there any other areas that you want to maybe explore you know, in the future? Yeah, I mean, I, I always love portraiture and I, as a photographer we choose a subject, but I think we photograph first and foremost, so we like to shoot anyway. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I love portraiture, I did 10 years of it and food. Something I really like now, which I was not really into it, uh, is landscape. And I really discovered ah, landscape okay. when I went to Iceland. Yeah. Iceland was really like an eye-opener for me for landscape. Even so, that country is like a god gift for photographer. I mean, it's amazing. The, the things you do, the thing you see, uh, it's fabulous. But landscape is nice. I mean, it's, it's a different... Um, again, you're, you're not with people, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. 
which is which was bring another sort of atmosphere, another approach to things. But I really like portraiture. Um, sorry, landscape. Right, right. Okay, so hmm. so maybe in the future you can. Yeah, I mean start something I would bit. do more like on pleasure more than professionally. Right. right. I mean when I do I do f what they call lifestyle. So when I do food, it's not just food. I do interiors, which I really like because I like interior design anyway. Yeah. But you you. Int integrate a lot of other things in food. It's, it's, I call it hospitality, you know, it's a bit technical, but it englobes anything to do with food. Yeah. So food, hotel, restaurants, Absolutely, people, yes. and I really love, love the, the interaction. The food, yeah. how they were picked Back and in books, like, yeah. you know, I love taking, uh, for example, I went to Korea and we did the recipes, but we shot a lot on location, we met chefs, we shot in restaurants, and that I really like. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I really feel like on a holiday, being paid for, you know. How good is that? Yes, it is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get to travel, but not not like this. Yes, you know, this well. you got you got the best food. Not you, every you, day, you got the do, best food. You got the best location. Yes. You got to taste them, yeah. which is good. <laughs> yeah, we have to eat as well, which is a tough <laughs> job, but we have to do it. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. We both started with film photography mm -hmm. and now we're both using digital photography for work. Uh, but the best, I don't think there's the best, <laughs> I think it's just the way I look at looking at things. Uh, we had the chance to do, to do film and digital. I think the fact of using film did teach me a lot about the technical and learning about light, how light reacts, the color temperature and all sort of things, because now the camera does it all for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I said now, this, you need your eyes, so it gives yep. you much more time to think about things. Now, the film is nice. I'd say that the film, when you shoot on low, on, on low shutter speed, the blur with the, with, the, with the film is more interesting than the blur with pixels. Mm. Um, the dynamic range with digital is incredible. I mean, what you can get out of a, of a digital nowadays is like incredible, which is much more than what you used to do with film. I think it's two different things, you know, but... That they are I mean, there's a romanticism things. about film now. <laughs> All the young people are, oh, I want to use film, it's great. And yeah, it is great. Well, film, film is coming back. Yeah, yeah, film is coming back, but yeah. it's like vinyl is coming back as well. Yeah. You know, it's like a lot of things are coming back in fashion. The 80s fashion is coming back. Um, I still think digital is moving incredibly. I mean, now it's really pretty amazing what you can do. Yes. And even on a, a friend of mine did an exhibition, he did shoot on digital, then he changed it to scan it to get a negative. Yep. I mean, yep. now the technology can do whatever you want. So if you want to do film, fine, but it's just the thing is, film are expensive. The good thing about film, it's, it learn you, it, it teach you to, to think about your shot because yep. there's 36 frame. Digital, you can shoot until the cows come home, you know? <laughs> uh, then you think more. And that's what maybe we used to think more about our image because yep. it was a process which was taking a little bit longer with yep. the Polaroid and so on. To be honest, when digital came up, I still had clients for magazine, Condé Nast, we used to shoot on film and I used to double the image on digital. Right because it was, we wanted both. And... Um, so you take the film and you scan it? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I was shooting on film on Hasselblad, yeah. and then I was shooting on digital. Exactly the same shot, I just changed back. Okay, all right. And um, there was hardly any difference. I mean, the difference would be in the grain, obviously, because yes. it was not pixel. But now you can, I mean, you've got, you got ways of getting around things. It's just amazing. Yeah, I, I, I agree too, because I, I Maybe I'm still very accustomed to, to what, how film used to look. Mm -hmm. So even when I process my, my digital files, I, I tend to try to mimic what I, what I used yeah, to see yeah, in films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, I'm not too keen on looking at digital colors. I don't know if you understand. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I think mm. digital is too digital when it kind of looks fake yeah, to me. Yeah, it's a bit too digital. Yeah. But yeah. that's as well what I notice not too many times, I think. It's, I think now with digital, the problem is uh, people can shoot digital and everything, but sometimes when I see the post-production and I see the result, yep. I'm thinking that that's been really bad retouched, yep. and some people just can't retouch, or they do too much on the picture. And I keep the the I think everybody should do that. It's to keep the same reflex as with film. It's to try as 
try to get as much as possible. Mm. When you click, you get as much as possible. So digital should be there yes. to enhance and Correct. control the balance. And, but not try to go mental and change this, <laughs> change that. And sometimes I see pictures and the first thing I see is a retouching yes. before the image. Yes. The image should be key. You should look at the image. Ah. And it's like, it's like a woman being of a makeup. <laughs> the beauty is to have a makeup, but it's, it's flawless. But if you start to see how oh, they got too much on the, oh, then no, it's no. too much. I, I, I retouching is the same. It's got to be totally 100 percent, 200, 300 thousand percent yeah. agree. Because you know what? If you guys want to be professional, let me tell you, you don't want to waste too much time in post production. Mm. You know, you really Next want time. to, you really want to do like at least 95 percent in camera. You do the rest five percent in post production because. Mm -hmm. Like when, when you do commercial stuff, you can end up with hundreds of shots. When I do weddings and portraits, I'll end up with hundreds or even mm. thousands of shots. You don't want to spend hours and hours and hours mm. doing that because you will get job piling up at the back. Exactly. You just cannot process them all the way you do in, as but an the, amateur the, level. The thing I would say, the, 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 the beauty of uh, handling uh, Photoshop and things like that, it's sometime, and it's really interesting, it's to be able to change one image into three, four different images because the retouching can play First, you can move into black and white, which is great, but even the contrast and the effects sometimes used in a normal way, not crazy way, can really give a completely different mood to an image. Yes. And that is really interesting about the digital, mm. which before in, in film, what well, you couldn't really do, you, you could do stuck. it by printing <laughs> it, but it was not now. It's no. like you can really get things where if you get your retouching and your mood, because sometimes a lot of people have their retouchers, some people don't, I do retouch and I like to put my own personality in it. Mm. And sometimes I see an image... Your signature. Yes. Yeah, and, and because somebody can be a fabulous retoucher, but at the end of the day, he, he hasn't got the emotion that you had on that specific moment. Yep. I might put a shade, I might do something to change something because that's what I want. A professional retoucher would do an amazing job, but it would do it by the book. Yeah, yeah. Unless he knows you for 10 years and he's retouched all your work and then he's become a double of you. Mm. Which used to be the same as well with printing because I used to have my own personal black and white printer. Yeah. And I used to drop him my thing and I knew it was going to be great because he knew me so well that he knew how... How you wanted... How you wanted he knew the paper, look, yes, he knew yes. how I wanted it. So that's a dynamic that you create with people when they yeah. work for you. Mm. So, one last thing. What camera are you using these days? <laughs> Which camera? Well, for you guys. <laughs> I used to use Hasselblad and Canon and various camera, but now I'm really bringing it down to, to one, which is a Nikon. Uh, doesn't mean it's the best or the worst or whatever. It's I think at tool. the end of the day, it's a tool. I'm very happy about the dynamic range of Nikon, but Leica is great, as, as everybody knows. Hasselblad is great. As, after a while, you have to choose a camera for what you're doing, for the portability and for the technical aspect of it, of what it is necessary for what you do, whether you do landscape, location or whatever, that's what the major thing is. But all camera now take great image, I mean the iPhone takes great image, I mean I've got to mention it. Uh, I've used iPhone in things and people thought it was shot on, on camera. <laughs> so what can I say, you know, at the end it's your eye more than anything else. Absolutely, bring your iPhone and your Eye brain. integrity, that's the main thing. <laughs> Well, thank you very much uh, for pleasure. talking to us. We, uh, we learned a lot of things. Thank you so much. Great it was stuff. a pleasure. So, uh, yeah, thank Take you. Care. Well, thank you, Sean, for coming into the show. Thank you. It was a pleasure, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Yeah. And if you like what you're seeing, you want to see more, please subscribe our channel. And if you want to check out Sean's work, we have the link below in the description. And before I go, you guys are really heavy, breaking my neck. <laughs>